Lunch meeting natin 500 capacity. Hindi na. <laughs> Joke time. Bawal Hindi ba na rin kaya. Tinitignan ko kung gagawin $1,090 eh. Anyways. Dok, kailangan hatiin na talaga to. Sir, pwede ka na mag-share screen. Okay. Nagawin na rin kitang host kasi may third year ako, sir, ha? Iwan kita. Okay po. I'll take over. Thank you, Dok. Okay, guys, can you see my screen now? Yes, Dok. Yes, okay. I think we could start. Okay, sorry about this um, change in the schedule. I Normally, we should have the lecture every Fridays at 5 o'clock, no? But um, I requested Dr. Andres if we can have it by earlier because I have also a meeting at this afternoon. And And your L is supposed to contact or coordinate with us from time to time if there's going to be some changes in the schedule. I was waiting for your message to remind me about this lecture. Who's your L O? Rava. Yes, doctor. Yeah, I I send you a message in Viber. Yeah, actually, uh, that was I was giving just a pharma exam, doctor. I see. Okay. Next time, please coordinate with your lecturer a day or two days before. But doctor, I texted you back as I finished my exam. Yeah, I but I was yeah I was telling you that it should be a day before or two days before. Okay. 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 okay doctor. Not not on the day itself. Okay, because you also have to adjust the certain uh, changes with your faculty members, probably because of the connection problem or if there's going to be something that comes up so yeah actually, uh, doc we already uh, texted in a messenger to dr andres about this yeah yeah okay dr andres will be the one who's going to tell you who will be the lecturer and you should also coordinate with the, with the assigned lecturer okay next time okay doc All right doc. okay so guys Uh, the topic for today will be discussing about animal research and testing. No, um, who among you here has their own pets at house? Most of you. Can you raise your hands or send me thumbs up? Those who have pets in their houses. Okay, I could see some hands raising up. Yep. Whether it's a dog or a cat or a bird or a fish, okay. What does a pet usually do to human beings? What does it usually do to you, Am Amrita Kumari? Amrita Kumari. What does an animal usually do or a pet to the owner? Yes, doctor. Yeah, what does your pet usually do to you, or what's the effect of having a pet to the owner or to the family? Why did you this? Why did you decided to have a pet in the first place? I I love uh, animals, so I have all kind of pets. I have a rabbit, I have a cat, and also I have a dog. So. Can you Can you turn on the video so I could recognize you, Amrita? Okay, so, so you're fond of animals, right? Yes, doctor. Mm -hmm. And what is the usual effect of having an animal or a pet at house? What does uh, it do to the owners? You feel very nice. Like, they are more friendly. And even if Uh, they understand us more than human beings. I think, like if we are sad or if I'm upset, my dog comes to me and he just lies down beside me. Or even my cat, if I'm ill, mm -hmm. sleeping, she just lies. She comes and lies down beside me, so they can okay. connect to us even if they cannot sleep. Yeah. Like, okay. 
So basically, pets are stress reliever for some people, right? But we also have to understand that entails a lot of hard work and responsibility of taking care of animals. I agree. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yeah, it would also entail a part of our budget for their vaccination, for their food, for their shelter. If, if the pet gets sick, we also need to send him to the veterinarian, right? Okay, so this topic is quite personal to some people because we're talking about animals on this afternoon regarding on the testing and the ethics of using the animals in medical research. Okay, thank you, Amrita. You can turn off your video now and put it in mute. Okay. Okay, we should know that the objectives for this afternoon is know the basic facts of the animal research and explain why animal models are actually used. And we try to see and assess the, the three R's of moral using the animals as research and alternatives. So what do you think when someone says animal testing or animal research? What do you think? What comes to your mind? Um, anyone from the group, please? You uh, doctor, turn basically, on. animal yeah. research, uh, whenever we make any kind of, uh, I, I guess whenever we make any kind of uh, medicines, uh, before that there's some uh, animal testing is done and animal research is done so that we can be sure that it is safe for humans. Like, for example, on gorillas, we can say gorillas have 99%, more than 99% same DNA as humans. So they become very apt subject targets for doing testing and animal research for whatever okay. reason. Okay. Thank you very much. What's your name again? Uh, sir, Nagpal Dere. Okay. Please turn on the video if you are actually reciting so I can recognize you. Probably... Yes. For those who are actually active in recitation and actively participating, sometimes we can also give some consideration in your points or in your grades, okay? And it's very it important. Okay, so you, you, you actually have the, the correct uh, idea when we talk about animal research. This is actually the correct term that we use for animals that in research and animal testing it means that safety testing of drugs, which is only a small proportion of animal use in bioscience. Okay, let me just close my door. Hold on. Okay, so, so basically the use of animals in bio or bioscience or medical studies. And you, you're actually correct when you say that we usually use the, the, the animals to test for its safety because of the close association or close relevance to the DNA of the two species, okay? So why are animals used? Researchers aim to understand how the body functions and what are the diseases that affect us. Now, they must also study living systems in the effect that diseases are actually having or develop on them. So this also involves research that would not be ethical to carry out on humans. So that's why make use of animals as replacement. Despite the difference in appearance between humans and animals, they have a very similar biology or anatomically similar. Okay, can you please tell me which is actually the human heart in this picture? And which is actually the animal heart? The human heart is on the top. And the bottom picture or the image is actually a heart of a pig, okay? As you could notice, you could see a bit of a similarity of its appearance and also some of its functions, okay? So 
even mice and men are actually 99% genetically similar. Okay. Could you please turn off the microphone to those who just joined? Automatic, put your micro microphone on. Okay. Which percentage apply to which of the animals that being used in bio, science, or medical research? Could you guess among all of the species of animal? What do you think is actually, what animal do you think would actually have the greatest percentage? Mice, dog. Doctor, mice or rats? Mice, dog. Rice, mice, rice, rats, okay. Okay, that's, okay, let's see. You're correct, no? Almost 74% mice are actually used to, in conducting a medical research, 7% would be, um, Rats, no, and even you see, even fishes are actually being used, and just roughly 2.5 percent of other mammals are actually being used. Okay, why do you think so? Okay, we actually have to understand also the importance. Can you please put it on the mode? Mute mode, please. You are distracting the discussion. Okay. Stress animals provide more variable results than non-stress animals, or just like humans, because definitely if you're going to subject something or someone or for, for, a, for a mice in particular into testing, you are subjecting it to a lot of factors. You are actually inflicting stress because you are disturbing his daily or natural habitat in the first place, right? So basically you are giving him a stress and stress levels also is very important for us to conduct a scientific accuracy, okay? So what are the three R's or the three principles of good science that are designed to improve animal welfare and scientific accuracy. First is refinement, okay? We find ways of making animals live better in labs. This can include toys or for the animals or better training for the technicians or even providing him, what? Food as a reward, no? Reduction. We also find ways to use few animals as possible to get the result that you wanted, okay? Replacement, using non-animal alternatives whether they exist, okay? I'd like to show you a video on this particular R's wherein you would find or determine which among the three R's have been observed in conducting such research, okay? I understand that you won't be able to hear, but let's see. I'm just going to explain to you further, okay? As I play the video, I'm just going to explain to you. Wait. Dogs have played an important part in medical research. Can you hear the audio? No. Yes, doctor, a uh, little much. A little, you can hear audio, right? Yeah, we can. Not clearly, dog. He is increasing the volume bit. Over the last century, including the use of insulin to treat diabetes. So this, in this video, they make use of the dogs for insulin treatment. They also use this dog for treatment of heart diseases. Okay. 
dogs are exercised daily. They give them a rich environment. So the dogs are actually being used and they actually conduct uh, exercises daily and they are actually fed very well. Okay. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I need to synchronize it so I can explain. Yeah, we see beagles and research into the treatment of heart disease. The dogs are exercised daily. They give them a rich environment with plenty of toys to chew and people to play with. And just like the 8 billion pet dogs in the UK, dogs used in research and testing benefit from a good diet and rewards based training. The dogs are trained to leave their pens and to jump onto so the dogs are trained to leave their pens and they actually jump on their way in down. So they also put some harness, gently restrained, so the heart function can be measured. So that the heart could be also be tested. The scientist now is using the ultrasound scanner, which is actually used in, in the usual ultrasound. Some people still think. However, some people think that animals are used to test for cosmetics, but now it's it's legal in UK and other parts of the world. So what did you notice in this video? What are the three R's that being observed in this video? Can you tell me? Based on the three R's, anyone? You saw the dog being what? Put in a harness, and what is that? What is that principle? Refinement, doctor. Okay, it would be, is it the refinement? Okay, hold on. Okay, let's go back to our three R's. You have your refinement, you have your reduction, and you have your replacement. So your answer would be what? Refinement, no? Finding ways of making the animals live better in the labs, like provision of some toys or some distractions on making it actually as if the, 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 the animal is, living in a, in a pen, no? So what else? We make it also think of the, or the use of the stream, okay? Reducing also, or refinement, use of the strain, because the animal would not be put in a very stressful because they need to analyze the heart activity so instead of holding them or tying them, so they put carefully the strain, no? The strain. Okay, let's watch this video about the mice being used this time for Alzheimer's disease. Can you hear the audio in the video? Yes. Not clearly, doctor. Not clearly. Okay, I was just going to explain. Animals are often used to find treatments for human disease. So in this video, are being used to mimic these mice Alzheimer's are being disease, used for, for Alzheimer's disease. Okay. In Alzheimer's disease, As we all know, Alzheimer's brain disease has brain damage, type. right? Sufferers lose their memory. They find Our it patients more lose more their memory and things, it's very difficult like for them to do daily activities. They can do little for themselves. And then eventually these it's people cannot do anything for themselves. And it put, actually put a lot of stress and upset. Makes the patients the 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 So the mice is be used these to mimic the disease. Okay. In this video, they use the mice and they're going to observe its behavior. For example, they burrow and dig less. Normally, the mice are actually would dig and borrow, no, as the usual uh, activity. But we're going to discover later on that um, an experimental mice would do opposite. Mice like to okay. dig and burrow. 
and we so can measure like, this by so they like to dig and borrow they enjoy it doing it regularly the timing how long it takes my and the scientists usually use the time for how long will it actually accomplish the task or borrow and by how quickly they bury marbles and this you could see the marbles how they quickly they're going to dig in it and they're going to uh yes prabha mraval they're going to borrow and dig this one yes doctor some are waiting in the lobby yeah i'm still accepting them from okay, time okay. to time thank you yeah i'm still accepting them So these are a simple measure of the difference between normal mice and Alzheimer's mice. So you could see that this is just a simple measure of a normal mice and the mice with Alzheimer. Because normally you would observe that they keep on borrowing and digging and then hiding the marbles, but the Alzheimer mice would do the opposite. These normal mice seem to be enjoying themselves emptying the tube. So they are actually emptying the tube. No, they want take out what's actually inside it in and the marble burn. experiment the mice are not burying the marbles on purpose the marbles just get submerged as the mice so in this experimentation the marbles were actually not intendedly the indigo or they just what they just piled up no but the yes, mice yes, didn't actually yes, intendedly yes. to hide it yes, so they don't, they just ignore this the world over study okay. disease in many different ways health cultures and studies but now recently scientists have now using cell cultures no and computer generated um, models or images to conduct such activity or research these are human all these methods at some point there are also human volunteers that they also make use but again there should be some certain limitations and also if they going to pass an ethical review the use of animals including mice is essential to study changes in behavior in control so the use of animals in experimentation is very essential no in the observation especially on the behavior aspect or processes okay I think i'm able to show you now okay let's go back so in here we studied the refinement reduction and replacement no alternatives scientists usually use ways to replace animals no in the research and this would actually include your cell culture no and done animal methods would actually complement rather than replace the animal research so they can also just add on to their observation and make use of some computer models no and cell cultures that may be also taken from the animals at some point the researchers also try to to use the lowest type no of um the animal as possible no perhaps a fish instead of a sheep or a fruit fly instead of a mouse so the first question is about replacing the animal use altogether so using the mice instead of monkey would be regarded as an enrichment provided that the net suffering as expected to fall as a result no so why do you think scientists try to replace use animal use and why they use lower animals do you agree with this idea well probably yes because it could be also beneficial no so these are the videos that i was able to share with you and then we'll come up with the other examples of your three r's and uh, if you could think of another r in the principle of the model use of the animal in testing what could that be you have your replacement you have your refinement you have your what reduction what other are that you could suggest 
anyone doctor maybe uh, reinforcement reinforcement a very good of certain regulations of certain laws that governs this the use of the animals that's correct that's that's one what else it could also be what restriction no certain date or certain studies or certain uh, activities can only be restricted or allowed no if they actually able to pass on or uh, prove that it's actually going to outweigh the benefit so let's go on with the ethics of the animal testing so previously we actually uh, look on the use of the animals in space flight to further understanding of the space environment. No? The use of the animals in scientific testing has always been, will always be a controversial subject, okay? So for some people, it's still controversial because uh -huh, there are advocates of um, protection of this such animal, no? It is an unavoidable fact that animal research also, we cannot deny this, that the development of vaccines and medicines were in fact successful and some surgical techniques and advancement of scientific understanding because of the use of the animal. Especially considering also that there are certain culture, religious beliefs and tradition that we also need to consider, right? In India, the, you have a lot, of, in Hinduism, right? You have a lot of um, respect to animals, particularly what, which, what animals? The cow, doctor. Actually, the cows, yes, the cow. So a lot of you people actually don't eat or don't usually take much of this consumption of the cow because you have a very high respect on this kind of animals, no? It is estimated that between 50 and 100 millions of animals are used in research, and some are purpose bred for testing, but many are still caught in the wild. No? Measuring the pain and suffering in the animal testing. No? The U.S. Department of Agriculture defines a painful procedure as one that is reasonably expected to cause more than a slight or momentary pain or distress in human beings to which the procedure was applied. So do you think this is a valid way to measure suffering in animal? So in measuring the suffering animal, they, they in UK, they usually make use or classify this as a mild, moderate, or a substantial amount of suffering that they cause an animal. The fourth category in subjecting is un unclassified when the animal is in fact anesthetized and then killed before regaining consciousness, okay? So in measuring pain and suffering in animal testing, no, there were actually uh, some uh, allowable uh, licenses, experimental licenses that been issued. This is data is in UK. So the argument between this, uh, pro-animal testings and the opponents actually um, spark a lot of debate, no? So what are the pros and cons of the animal testing, no? Advocates of the animal testing would actually say that uh, human life has greater intrinsic value than animal life, no? It means it has actually more, uh, noble to save a life of a human than to save a life of an animal. Legislation already protects all the lab animals from cruelty or mistreatment. Millions of animals are actually killed for food consumption, no? So why medical research is not more worthy death? Because it's actually going to benefit more humans as well. So few animals feel actually pain and they are actually killed before they suffer. So these are the contention of your animal advocates and animal testing advocates, no? Mm -hmm. So the opponents would actually going to <clears throat> contest no, that animals also have the right to live as humans. And the strict controls have not even protected some animals being abused. The deaths of the research are sometimes unnecessary and the animals 
in fact, would suffer while they are being locked up? And how do we know that they do or they don't feel the pain? Okay, so these are the contention of these two, um, two activists, no? the animal uh, pros and the cons, animal testing pros and the cons. So again, the three principles that guiding the animal testing would be replacement, use of alternative non-animal method, reduction, use of statistical methods so that a smaller number of animals would be required to get your positive result, okay? And refinement, improving the experiment so the animals would not suffer, okay? In UK, um, the British law requires that any medicinal drug that to be used in animal or humans must undergo a substantial testing program, you know, at least on two different species of a live mammal, okay? One of which would be, uh, must be large than a non-rodent, okay? So animal researchers say that it would be impossible to eliminate all the animal tests, but scientists, are always working on ways to minimize the suffering of animals and to ensure that few animals as possible will be required. Okay, let's take a look at this case of Laika. Okay, historically, Laika is actually a mixed bred dog, which is, they say, recruited into the Soviet space program after being found on the streets of Moscow. So this was 1950s, no? The Laika, Laika's mission would make her the first creature, the first living uh, thing to orbit the earth in attempt to study the prolonged effect of weightlessness on the living being. So Laika was three years old then when she was launched in Sputnik 2 in, nine, uh, in 1957, November 3. She was secured in a special pressurized capsule three days before the launch and she was provided with high nutrition gel for food and water. Okay. So Laika experienced minimal effects during the launch, but in their observation, the heart rate rise three times its resting rate, and she appeared to be agitated and then eventually calming down. It appeared that the weightlessness alone did not cause major changes to the vital thing, functional, fun, uh, vital physiological function of the living creature. So it was actually a good news for human space flight. Okay. However, the cabin temperature began rapidly increasing to unacceptably high levels. So it becomes so hot, no? So the temperature control inside was failing. So between five and seven hours into the flight telemetry in their monitor, it showed there that there were no signs of life within that capsule. Aika died from stress and overheating and undoubtedly a painful and distressing death. So as the world began to learn the second Sputnik, no word of Laika's death was released. So Sputnik 2 that carried Laika into orbit was not retrievable. And it has been intended that Laika would in fact going to die in orbit. So at the time, the world believed that Laika may be recovered. So protests from animal protection group began around the world. And in November 5, a report from a named Russian scientist that the dog could not live much longer. Other articles talk about the importance of the information being learned by sending an animal into space. So still the scientists were still claiming that Laika was in good health. Well, in fact, he's been dead for four days already. And eventually the truth of the dog face emerged in November 11, confirming that Laika actually died. So the exact cause of Laika's death remained mystery for decades, okay, until the truth was not confirmed in 2020 when scientists confirmed that Laika died between five to seven after the launch due to heat and stress, okay? So Laika became a hero to the Soviet people and captured the imagination of a lot of people. So her flight immediately proved 
that near-term capability for human space life. So the question of whether the sacrifice of Laika was justified for the purpose of space technology is still debatable. Could the flight have been postponed until the recovery of the capture has been possible? Okay. So the political climate and tension between the US and the Soviet Union at the time meant the ethical consideration of the missions were not actually considered because they are actually in, in a race. Whoever is going to have it done. And eventually, as we all know, USA actually landed on the moon. But it was Yuri Gagarin who was the first human on the outer space. Okay, so do you think the mission was dis justified? If we are going to be in a face-to-face, -face, I would actually would like you to have this discussion and a big debate. How could the experiment have been improved? And what was the outcome of putting the first man in space, a valid aim for sacrificing Laika? Okay, so let's talk about the law and you could actually view it for those who have MS Teams access, you can actually access now this. Okay, hold on. I think I can, I already downloaded this. In... You can have access to this in the MS Team, but unfortunately I could not share with you the the presentation. So this slide is from Dr. San Luis. No, you would you would start as you studied in pharma that if you're going to develop a new drug, it has to go or has to conduct a preclinical trial. So when we talk about in vitro, please make use of a cellular, no, or subcellular or what on the laboratory wherein if you're going to make use of an in vivo, you make use of the living animals like rodents or non-rodents. And then after that, if it's going to pass on the clinical trial, it would go on to clinical phases one, two, and three. So with the advent of the COVID vaccines, it actually started first with the preclinical and then went on to the three phases of your uh, clinical trials on the humans, no? So what is the animal research? This is in vivo testing. It makes use of the animal for experimentation and scientific procedures using the animal model. So why do we use animal? Scientific procedures refer to any activities which entails manipulation. The key term here is manipulation no? of animal for the following purposes. Biomedical research, experimentations, teaching and instruction, in our laboratory, you, you usually you make use of the rodents as well and um, some other animals. You know, we also use them for the product or testing for food drugs, agrochemical and cosmetic, and production of sera or serum or other biologicals. When we talk about manipulation, this is actually uh, interfering with the normal physiological, behavioral, and anatomical integrity of the animal deliberately or, or intentionally, okay? Because you want to see a behavior or effect. That's why you inflict some stress or pain, or this could actually causing the animal to have or, or exposing him to harm, no? So expose it to any parasite or organism, maybe a drug or chemical biological product, even enforced activity, unusual restraining, abnormal nutrition, surgical procedure, or maybe depriving it from a usual care. So that is your manipulation. So why do we use animal? No, again, for teaching purposes, initial phases of your research, non-animal synonyms. So comparing biological similar to humans, no? So animals are susceptible to also the same health problems as humans. However, animals don't usually prone for abuses of um, some chemicals, 
no? or the, the lifestyle, unlike the humans. No? You don't see an animal drinking a lot of alcohol or smoking cigars. No? So therefore, if you're going to inflict such harmful chemicals on them, you, you manipulate them deliberately. No? But animals are biologically similar to humans. As you can see in this diagram, no? or image, you could see some sequences that are actually aligned. No? And the most, the closest one is actually the chimpanzee. No? The three R's in research, replacement, reduction, and refinement. Okay. So biological research using animal models uh, in HIV AIDS, we make use of uh, pri primates counterpart called the simian immunodeficiency virus. No, they also have that. In cancer, researchers have placed cells from human cancer tumors into immunologically different mice. In asthma, they use of these guinea pigs and non-human pri primates that have led to the development of your leuco leukotriene receptors antagonists. Vaccines, the polio from a deceased boy was replicated in monkeys and then transmitted to monkey to monkey as an animal model. So the development of polio vaccine in 1950 were actually made use from mice, rats, and animals, even antibiotics. No? Four streptococci infected mice were treated with penicillin in 1940s. High blood pressure researches conducted in rats, rabbits, cats have led scientists to discover types of drugs you know, in cases in, uh, in treating mild and severe cases of hypertension and even organ transplant. The first effective human transplant of kidney was performed. The surgery has been previously perfected in dogs. So this is Dolly Catalan from UK. He is actually, she actually subjected to certain chemicals and then what? Food, you no? Know, that brought about his her death of lung disease and severe arthritis. So what types of animals are being used? Okay, we already discussed this. Okay. Who among you has this kind of pet in their houses? This is a teacup, right? So animal rights and animal welfare refers to relationships people have with animals and the duty they have to assure that the animals under their care are treated humanely and responsibly. Animal rights is actually the idea that intends to provide humane treatment to animals. It is the right not to be exploited for human purposes. So in this is actually in the uh, in, in America, wherein they actually had this Animal Welfare Act of 1998 to institute the basic systems, organization, and practices in all laboratory animals, which is eventually, I'm sorry, this is eventually being uh, adopted in the Philippine setting. So this is a law in the Philippines to conduct, uh, to grant authorization to conduct scientific procedures using animals to any concerned entity. So the Animal Welfare Act of 1998 or RA 8485 would lay out now the guidance, the, the protocols in guiding for the care and use of animals in laboratory research. No? Also in America, the uh, Philippine Association for which actually they also copied or uh, adapted, no? Philippine Association of Laboratory Animal Sciences, Code of Practice for the Care and Use of Laboratory Animals in the Philippines, and the International Guiding Principles of Biochemical uh, Biomedical Research. They also issued certificates or registration to private or government entity, no? uh, allowing them to conduct animal studies, and this must be secured from Bureau of Animal Industry. So the government offices that are responsible to oversee would be the animal industry, the PALAS, no? Philippine Association of Laboratory Animal Sciences, the PCHRD, and the PAUB. So the laws are 8485. So what are the principles of animal care and use? Uh, 
you also have to lay out clearly the rationale why you are actually using animals, the species that are being used, appropriate species, appropriate analgesia. You also need to conduct if the study is being in a closed supervision. Okay, what are the interventions or what would be the post procedure care? No? Physical restraints are not normal methods for the housing. This should not be used simply as convenience in handling. Okay, and the period of restraining should be at the minimum, wherein um, some of these animals are also being trained to adapt the restraint devices. Surgical procedures on animal are also discouraged, no? unless this is scientifically justified and uh, need to pay attention to animal well-being through continuing evaluation of the outcome. Food or fluid restriction should be scientifically justified with monitoring of physiologic or behavioral indices that usually be in use, no? and use of least restriction to achieve scientific objective. Other consideration when, when actually taking animals as your research would be veterinary care. You also have to train the personnel, no? hygiene. You also need to protect the people working in the laboratory, hazard identification and risk assessment, personal protection and medical evaluation and prevent medicine for the personnel. So animal, even the handling no? of, our pay, of our animals is strictly observed. No? In, in, in animal environment housing and management, we, these are the things that you also need to consider. What are the species and how are we going to strain and breed of animals? Their sex, age, the sizes, no? How are we going to maintain them? Are we going to maintain them in singly or in groups? Duration of the holding period, presence of hazardous materials, no? Project codes and experimental design. So in physical environment, uh, micro environment, we make use of primary enclosure. That's actually immediate surroundings and temperature control no? environment. Macro environment is the secondary enclosure when you talk about the rooms or the barns or outdoor habitat. So micro environment usually conducted in the lab. No? Housing, naturalistic environment as much as possible. No? Protect from any uh, hazards. No? primary enclosures would allow normal behavior and physiologic needs of our animals, allow social interaction as well and development of hierarchies because some animals or species, they're very important for them. Some animals are actually territorials, right? And the hierarchy is being observed on this uh, kind of uh, species. Adequate ventilation, allow easy access to food and water and providing a secure environment. So wherein they cannot escape or they could not injure themselves. Elimination is also important. Noise should also be minimized as well. Some effects of the loud noise is very have a de detrimental health effect to this uh, species or animal that could also increase uh, blood pressure, infertility, adrenal weights. No, you could see here. Can you see the dogs? So. Animals can some animals can actually adapt to its their environment. No behavioral management. No, when you talk about structural environment, determine the complexes, complexities and arrangements. No, and you also observe the animal activity, how they interact with each other, the non communication through visual, auditory, and olfactory signals. And mind you, animals also emit this sense of um, distinct smell, no? Animals have their own smell that also implies some signal to the opposite sex perhaps, or maybe they, if they are in heat or something like that, no? So you also need to determine which of these animals are naturally territorial or communal animals, they go in group, or the behavior of some animals, they tend to be on the isolate, no? Not all uh, social species can, should be maintained socially, no? Food, very essential for them. Water, beddings, sanitation, no? Other considerations. 
So this is actually the list of the registered laboratory animal facilities in the Philippines, wherein you can actually contact them if you intend to do some animal testing. No, other considerations like quarantine, stabilization, separation, surveillance, diagnosis, and treatment of the diseases. As a rule of thumb, 10% of the animal's weight is actually blood. So the maximum amount of blood that can be collected is 10% of the blood volume of that animal or 1% of the body weight of that animal. Okay. Okay, so in protocol review form, form, animal care and use statement, this should be accomplished as part of the research proposal if you're going to do such. Uh, would explain fully the all aspects of the research that involves animal and make sure that the groups know that they will be doing before the actual, before and the actual conduct of the research. So, how does it look like in a protocol review form? It has the procedure, the purposes, the duration or the time frame, who are the responsible person, the impression or investigators, the background and significance of the procedure for research, no? And then you're going to also describe the methodologies and the experimental design. And what are the animal manipulation methods that you're going to use? Is there a non-animal model applicable? If so, provide reasons for not using it. So this is expected that the study will be conducted according to the approved protocol and you need to get approval no, from this council or for the ethics committee prior to making changes affecting the protocol. Okay, we're not going to discuss this euthanasia anymore. So I think uh, we have covered uh, most of the essential things that we have to learn in animal testing. So it always have to boils down to the key message here is, is it actually going to outweigh the benefits and the risk? No? At the end of the day, we usually conduct research for the betterment of the humanity, whether this is ethically accepted, morally accepted, it's still debatable for some people. Who have different views, not just in life, also considering their cultural and sociological and religious background. Okay. So I think that would be all for today. Any questions from the group? I mean, from the class? None? Guys, do you have any concerns? No, doctor. No, doctor. None. Okay. Did you understand? It's just the three R's that you also need to remember. Refinement, replacement, and what is that? Reduction. Reinforcement. Reduction. Okay. Reduction. All right. Okay. I think we're going to leave it now, and I'll see you again in our next session. Thank you, okay, doctor. You can leave. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, doctor. 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 Thank you, doctor.